So my name's Amy. Um, I haven't been in this room in 19 years since I took organic chemistry. <laughs> um, <laughs> with Professor Richardson, who I believe retired last year. It's a big loss. Um, and so yeah, so I graduated Williams. I went straight from Williams to medical school um, at Mount Sinai. Um, started a residency in psychiatry, did my intern year. So I have my license, um, did not like the psych. So I moved on from that, then have uh, went on to graduate school to get uh, a master's in elementary ed. But since then, um, I've been using yoga, mindfulness, um, medicine, kind of all interweaving it um, along with education into kind of whatever I do and what I teach. Um, so you'll never forget how to take your blood pressure. This is, you do not need to be a doctor to help to know how to take your blood pressure. I taught this to my husband last night, and he's a lawyer, and I like, think he took physics for poets um, when he was in um, undergraduate. That was how he got his division credits. So, um, yeah, so if there's, so I, we don't have here probably the P's cuffs. Yeah. So my old little uh, blood pressure kit, had the pediatric cuff, which you don't need. Uh, if you ever do, this is what it looks like, <laughs> small. And then here's the big cuff. And your big cuffs, oh, that's the, yeah. will look very similar. Um, so I've given you out a handout, which is kind of like a page cheat sheet. Um, and it basically goes step by step on exactly how you have to take blood pressure. Um, so being able to take blood pressure and being able to kind of understand why we're taking blood pressure and what the values are that we're learning um, are different. Um, so it's great to kind of be able to do one, two, three, um, which are the steps, but also kind of understanding what you're hearing with each um, number that you'll be getting. So normally you'll be, you guys, it's, it's hard for me to understand what you guys know and don't know, so just bear with me. Um, so your brachial artery is right here. So you guys can probably all feel it. You can probably all feel it pulsing. Um, it's in your antecubital fossa, which is your elbow grease. And even if you don't feel it pulsing, I promise you that it's there. <laughs> and you will be able to hear it. So we use the brachial artery basically to determine um, that's the heartbeat that we're listening to when we use our stethoscope and our blood pressure cuff. So that's, all, that's the first thing that you have to do when you're taking your blood pressure. The second thing is that you will place your blood pressure cuff, oh yes, and this is the same but much newer than mine. <laughs> So you'll see, it has a nice little handy dandy cheat sheet in case you don't remember. But you'll see that there's, it says artery, and it points downwards. So you're gonna put the blood pressure cuff on the person's arm, you're not gonna have a sweater, you can have like a thin layer, but not obviously a heavy sweater. And you're gonna make sure the artery's pointed down. You put it around. You want it to be above your elbow grease, the antecubital fossa. Then you're gonna put your stethoscope on. Okay, so this is the bell of the stethoscope. You don't really need to know about that. This is the diaphragm. So we're gonna use the diaphragm, I just find it easier. So putting your stethoscope in your ears, it's so weird hearing them in your ears. You're gonna place the diaphragm right on where you found the brachial artery of the patient or person, whatever. Person's arm gonna be nice and relaxed. Generally, you want it about a right angle. You want it to be about the level of the person's heart, the arm. And both feet of the person are gonna be on the floor, so no cross-legged seated positions. Um, so okay, so then you have your diaphragm here. Then you're gonna practice pumping this up. They look a lot easier to pump than they actually really are. You have a valve here. Not sure where. Did I take the wrong one out? Where is the reading for this one? Oh, I have to undo it. <laughs> I was like, we don't have a 
a measurement. So you guys will all see this is measured in millimeters or mercury. That's not really important. But what is important is that it goes from 20 to 300. Hopefully you never have somebody with a blood pressure of 300. <laughs> okay? Just stop what you're doing then and call 911. <laughs> but, and you don't have anybody with a blood pressure less than 20, because that's the same thing. So what you do is usually this will all be set for you, but because these are new, they're not. So you're going to put this, let me this goes. on here, okay. This has a valve, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. You're gonna tighten it up. You're gonna see the blood, the, you're gonna see how it's starting to squeeze. You're gonna see it slowly coming up. Now initially, to check it, you're gonna want to pump it up to about like 160, 180, 70. Um, I wouldn't expect that anybody is over that. And once you get up to that, then you're gonna gradually, using the valve, so lefty loosey, start turning the valve. Slowly letting the air out, about two millimeters of mercury. Like, you guys can basically gauge it. So what you're listening for, when you pump it up initially, you're going to hear nothing, no heartbeat over the brachial artery. Slowly, you're going to let the air out or let the valve open. You're going to hear the first like sound, the first heartbeat sound. That's your systolic measurement. That's always your top number. Then you're going to listen to that, keep deflating the valve. Then all of a sudden, you're going to stop hearing it. That's going to be your second number. That's your diastolic number. And then you basically have your systolic is when your heart beat is your heart is contracting and has the highest highest pressure. So your heart is contracting, letting all that good oxygenated blood go to your organs. And that's why if you have high blood pressure, that means a lot of people have um, buildup in their arteries, for example, of you know fatty buildup or they might have some kind of vascular disorder, they would have a higher blood pressure because it takes, it's a higher resistance for that blood to get through those arteries to all of your organs. So you don't want that really high, obviously. Then your diastolic pressure is the pressure it takes for your heart to relax and then refill with blood. So you want that to be fairly low too because you want it to be able to relax and refill with blood, obviously so it can then pump it back out to the rest of the organs. It's all connected to the lungs and stuff, but we're not gonna go into there. So, that's your systolic and diastolic. Now we're gonna break up into pairs. Does anybody have any questions before we break up into pairs and you're gonna test it on each other? So the only other thing that normally I, I always like to say is that if you're doing a thorough exam of somebody, so for you guys, say you're asked to take the vital signs of somebody. If you're taking the vital signs of your blood pressure, you want to do the blood pressure in both arms. People might say, well, why? What's what? You know, it should, it should be the same on both arms. But if it's not the same or within two millimeters of mercury on both arms, that usually means that there's a vascularization problem in your arm um, or peripheral vascularization problem. And that's obviously something you want to know can find that in diabetes, um, some other kinds of you know, ather atherosclerotic diseases, etc. So you want both arms. Then a lot of times you might hear patients saying, I get dizzy when I stand up, or I sometimes lightheaded, like I feel like the world's spinning. So in that case, it's important to measure your orthostatic um, blood pressure. And in that case, you'll measure the patient lying down for five minutes, so they've been lying down for five minutes, you measure their blood pressure, and then the patient stands up, and you'll measure their blood pressure and heart rate, but we won't get into that, one minute and three minutes when they're standing. 
And if you have big drops um, in, 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 if you have big increase in blood pressure when you're standing up, or a big uh, drop in, um, sorry, if you have a big increase in heart rate or a big drop in blood pressure when you're standing up, that gives you an idea of why the person's dizzy or lightheaded. Um, and then the rest of the stuff on your sheet is just, you know, what typical blood pressure should be, what you're looking out for, just so it kind of gives you some idea of why we're doing this. Um, any questions? Okay, so there's nine of you. Now there's ten. So oh, there's ten. Okay, so that's perfect because there's five manual cuffs, right? Five manual and five electronic. There's cuffs. five electronic. So the electronic, I'm not as good at. <laughs> I have not looked at these ones. Um, I imagine that you just similarly, it's the same way of putting the blood pressure cuff around your arm, and then you just will handy dandy hook it up to here. And it probably presses in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you can press start. It'll go around. Um, well, my arm's not in it, so it's not going to do anything. And stop, and it will show you the reading. The thing, if you're testing out the manual ones that should be interesting, is try to do them three times in a row. Maybe not three times right in a row because your arm might start to hurt. But um, it's just to measure kind of the difference that you're getting because they're not, the manual blood pressure is a lot more um, reliable um, than the automatic one. But that being said, an automatic one, if you have a person with hypertension, is more, um, is better than nothing. Although you can get a lot of people who just sit there all day taking their blood pressures. Um, <laughs> so that's not exactly, and then their blood pressure just keeps increasing with every single time they take it. So that's not exactly great. So yeah, so let's try practicing the manual blood pressures first. Um, Maybe take it on both arms to see, that way you can kind of, if you're getting about the same, I imagine all of you should be getting about the same on both arms, so that way you kind of can gauge whether you're doing it right. And, and I'll just walk around if you guys have any questions. 